modular routers. One of my favourite mods in Vault Hunters and one of my favourite mods of all time. This is an insanely powerful item handling mod and it can do some crazy things, including moving items, fluid and energy. And the best part is, it's all done wirelessly and doesn't require any power to function. So let's start at the very beginning and look at how modular routers works and then we'll look at some slightly more complicated things and some really cool setups that you can make. So this is a modular router. However, at the moment, it's basically just a block. It has no personality and it has no function. What you're going to need to do is add some modules to it. When you right click on the modular router, you will see that there are three sections here, the buffer, the modules, and the upgrades. Now the modules are basically what gives a modular router its actual function. Now pretty much the simplest way for me to show you how the modular router works is for me to do a puller and send a module pair. Essentially all this does is it moves items from one inventory to another. So if we say we want the modular router to pull items out of this chest and then send them to that chest, we can then just put the puller module and the sender module in here. You'll see that it pulls the items from here and sends them into there. This is very, very basic, but it's gonna allow us to show some really important features of modular routers that got me super confused when I first used them. So first up, what's actually happening, we can't see it here, but the items are going from here into the buffer. And if we remove the sender module, you'll see that they will start stacking up there. If there is ever a problem with your modular router, check the buffer first. That will solve a lot of problems and help you diagnose problems much, much quicker than just trying to scramble around in all of the modules. Now you also have this redstone mode, which if it's set to always, it will always run. It doesn't matter what the redstone does around it, it will always keep running. You can, however, set it to high. Now I've reset this system so that the diamonds are back in there, but if it's set to high, it will only run if it has a redstone signal going into it. So for example, if I flick this lever, it will then start going, and then if I turn the lever off, it will stop. Pretty much how you'd expect a lever to work. Now low will do the exact opposite. So if you go to low, then it will only work if the lever is off, and if you turn it on, it will stop it working. You also have a pulse mode. Now pulse mode is interesting because it doesn't work if you just have it on or off, but every time you turn it on, it will do one pulse. And this is really good for setting up things like redstone clocks to go into your modular router. And then finally, you have never. And that means that no matter what happens, this modular router will never work. Normally you use this for debugging more than anything else. There's not a huge benefit to having a modular router that actually just doesn't do anything. There is also this really cool eco mode. What normally happens with your modular router is that it is constantly checking to see whether it can do the functions that you've set it to do. And this can cause a little bit of lag. Not really a noticeable amount if you've only got a couple going, but if you've got thousands of these in a big mega machine, it can cause quite a lot of lag. So the solution to this is to have a power saving mode. How this works is that if your modular router hasn't performed any of its functions for five seconds, it will go into power saving mode. Now, while it's in power saving mode, these modules will stop running entirely and it will only check every 50 seconds to see whether these modules will actually be able to fire. If they can fire, then it will go back into normal mode and just continuously do the functions as normal. If it can't, then it will just go back into power saving mode for 50 seconds again. Basically allowing a lot less lag because you're only getting one check every 50 seconds instead of continuous checks. Honestly, in my entire time of using modular routers, I have never once turned this on, but it is a cool feature nonetheless. Now, this is the overview of the actual router itself. That is basically how the modular router works, but each of the individual modules have their own interface. If we take the puller module, for example, we can set it so that it pulls from there, or we can shift right click and pull from there, and that will do a designated target block. But that honestly is not the most exciting part. If you right click into the puller module, you'll see this interface and this is fairly consistent across most of the modules. By default, you will have it set to blacklist and you will have an 
empty blacklist, meaning that everything will be able to pass through. If, however, we have diamonds and vault diamonds in this chest, but we actually only want the diamonds to go across and not the vault diamonds, what we can do is just right click and set the vault diamonds as the blacklist. It doesn't sacrifice the actual item itself, it's kind of a ghost representation. And then when we turn the router on, it will only pull the diamonds and not the vault diamonds out of this chest. Even if we remove all the diamonds, it will not pull those vault diamonds out. The other way of doing this is to put a white list of just the diamonds. Once again, that will do exactly the same thing and just pull the diamonds out. Whether you want to use a blacklist or a whitelist really comes down to whether you want to exclude an item or if you want only one specific item to go through. If you have a lot of items you want to pass through, I'd recommend using a blacklist. If you've got one specific item, then make sure you're using a whitelist. And if you're having problems getting your modular router to behave, whitelists and blacklists are normally the reason. They have caused me more problems than I care to admit. Now going in here as well, there are these five buttons and if you are just starting out, these are probably not worth touching in the slightest. But just to go over them quickly for you, match item damage will basically do what it says on the tin. It will let you distinguish between full health or half health items and can be good, for example, if you just want to collect full health bows from a skelly farm. Next, you have NBT data. Most of you playing Vault Hunters will be familiar with this. You can make it so that the NBT data has to match exactly or if it just ignores it completely. You can also use tag matching, which can be quite cool because it works in a similar way to the Vault Altar groups where you can pull all logs, not just, for example, oak or birch logs. To be completely honest with you, this match any button I would never touch. It's going to be a very, very, very rare circumstance that you want to match all of the items that are within here. It's very, very detailed and you're going to be an expert by the time you'll need to change that anyway. And finally, you have the termination button. I would always keep this to always continue unless there's a very specific reason not to. Whereas if you have it on terminate on match, if this did something, then this one would not do anything. If this did nothing, then this one would fire. That's kind of how that one goes. And then you have the opposite, which is terminate on no match. So basically, if this wasn't able to pull anything, then this wouldn't send anything. It doesn't really matter for a simple pulling and sending system, but it can make a big difference later on. But honestly, it's a very rare circumstance that you're actually going to use this. I've used it maybe once or twice in my entire year of doing this. So yeah, you'll also know exactly when you need to use it if you do need to use it. But that is essentially how that works. And then the sender module is basically the same here as well. So that is how the basic of modular routers works. So let's go through now some of the interesting modules and the crazy things that you can do with them. Now I've already fired a lot of information at you so we're going to go for something super fun and go for the flinger module. The flinger module is pretty awesome. All the flinger module does is it flings items. That's it. It's absolutely amazing that this is literally all it does. However, in Vault Hunters, it does have another use. Because you can no longer use a hopper to put items into the Vault Altar, then it makes it a little bit difficult to automate things. But what you can do is fire them from a modular router and it will pick those up as if you had thrown them on. Now, what this means is theoretically, you could have a modular router set up to fling every item in the game. And then you just go around and flick the switch for coal, salmon, diorite, and carrots, go one, two, three, four, and it would fire them all in, and then eventually this crystal would be completely done. It's completely impractical and utterly stupid, but it is one of the most fun things that you can do. And it is super customizable because you can select which direction you want it to fly out of. You can set the pitch for it, so how high up it goes originally, as well as whether it goes left or right, and even the speed that it comes out. And the more speed that you put on it, the more distance that you're gonna get from it. And let me tell you, it can go pretty wild. You can just have it going, like, out the door, basically. Now, the thumping can get a little bit annoying. However, there is a way to fix that, and that is with an upgrade called the muffler. Now, these apply directly into the modular router, and if we set one of these in here, you'll see that the sound is now gone. If we put a second one in, then the line that takes it from the chest 
is also gone, which makes it really good for integrating into your builds. Now you see the cool little red lights going around as well. Well, if you add a third muffler upgrade, now those lights are gone as well. Everything still functions, it's now just a lot quieter with less noise and light pollution. And again, the blacklist and whitelist work exactly the same and all these buttons work exactly the same as well. Now, if you want a less fun version of the flinger module, you also have the dropper module, which basically just drops the carrots. Yeah, it doesn't quite have the same feel to it, does it? But it gets the job done and it just drops anything that is in the buffer based on what side you've selected in the actual module itself. Now we've already looked at the sender and puller modules mark 2 which basically allows you to pull items and send items within a specific range of the modular router. However, there is a cheaper version which is the mark 1. However, this has some limitations. Firstly, with the mark 1 module, you have no ability to shift and right click to pull items out of an inventory. What you have instead is the sim setup to what you had on the flinger where you can select a direction for this to be pulled from. So in this instance we're going to select the left hand side which means that when we install this it's going to try and pull anything from the left hand side of this router which currently there's nothing there so there's nothing in the buffer. However if we put the chest next to the modular router and then set the whitelist to be diamonds, which you can just pull it straight from JEI over here. When we turn it on, you'll see it will start pulling the diamonds into it. So essentially, puller mark one has to be next to the actual modular router, Mark 2 just needs to be within a specific range. It's slightly different for the sender modules. So if we did the right hand side of the sender module, it will still send the items across to the right and it will put them in the first inventory it comes across. Now the real big difference here is that it has to have line of sight. So if I just put a dirt block there, that is just going to stop. It's not going to be able to send it until we remove the dirt block again. This is a very cheap way to get things moved about, but it has to be in a straight line and you have to have line of sight. The sender module tier 2 will just do as we did before. You just shift right click and it will go to that inventory as long as it is within a certain radius. But the sender module mark 3 is absolutely magical. For this one, we could use the chest that is all the way over here. Now that chest is a really long way away, but it will send items through the ender and then it will end up in the items over in our testing room that we built previously and as you can see these items are slowly loading in here and it actually gets even better than that because this one can cross dimensions so it can send it to the nether or it can send it to the end unfortunately it doesn't work in the vaults it would be great if it did but unfortunately, it doesn't. But that can be extremely useful for sending items over a long distance, or if you're crossing dimensions, it is fairly expensive to make that module though. My tip to you would be to use the cheapest module that you can physically get away with. That way, you can build more of them. Now let's say you have four chests that you want to be able to allocate items to, and you want them to all have the same amount of items in. Well, in that case, you want the distributor module. The distributor module can select multiple inventories and allow you up to eight inventories that you can put items into. And it works in exactly the same way as a sender mark two. So now if we put a stack of diamonds in there, you'll see that it will go around and put one item in each of the chests in a specific order. And if we check in all of these chests, there should be 16 in each of those chests. A nice easy way to share things out evenly. So between the pullers, senders, flingers and distributor modules you should be able to move items around fairly easily and using the blacklist and whitelist as well as some of the other augments that should make things very very simple for you. Now as you may have noticed some of these have been going quite slowly and in order to fix that we need to use some upgrades and the two upgrades that you'd want for this are the speed upgrades and the stack upgrades. The speed upgrades will just allow you to move items much quicker and the stack upgrades will allow you to move more items at once. So now if we put eight stacks in here and then flick this switch you'll see that that quickly it has put two stacks in each of these. It's insanely fast. 
And you need to be careful because sometimes you can do things a little bit too fast and you might want to remove some of those stack and speed upgrades. Faster is not always better when it comes to modular routers, but I think that demonstrates the power of how good this mod is as an item moving mod. It is actually insane to just be able to fling items around super, super quickly. But now we're going to get into the reason why a lot of people are going to want this mod in Vault Hunters, and that is for the energy upgrades. So let's say, for some bizarre reason, you've decided to unlock iron generators, and now you're kind of a little bit stuck because you're not able to power these crushes that your friend is giving you from Mechanism. And they're not a very good friend because they haven't hooked up the Mechanism stuff for you. Well, then you'd be in a little bit of a pickle, wouldn't you? So what are we going to do? Well, it's not a problem for us because we have modular routers. So first off, let's set our iron generator going and that's going to start pumping some energy. Now, what we need to do is put an energy upgrade into our modular router and it will slowly start to fill with energy from any adjacent power source. And you might be thinking, OK, hell, that's pretty cool. But what am I going to do with it now? Well, that is where our distributor module comes in, but specifically the energy distributor module, because this one works in the same way as the normal distributor module. And we can just go boom, straight in there, and it will power all of these crushes. As you can see, the energy is slowly ticking up there and pulling energy from the iron generator into the modular router and then wirelessly powering crushes and again you can put some mufflers on there so that you can't see the lines again but you are getting wireless power how cool is that right stick some cobblestones in here and then nice and simply you're going to have four crushes all going granted they're not going to be powered for very long because we've not got very strong upgrades but there you go they are going nonetheless now the great thing as well is you can stack these energy upgrades up to 64 energy upgrades each one of these will give you 50,000 capacity and a thousand fe per tick however if you've got 64 you're looking at 3.2 million FE capacity and 64,000 FE per tick. So currently, we are being limited quite a lot by the iron generator. If instead we had a furnerator from the power mod and then stick a load of coal blocks in there, you'll see that fills up really quickly. And then you're going to have zero issues keeping these powered because this is transferring an insane amount of energy. Genuinely, it's so cool. I love this mod when it was just items, but now you could do it with energy as well. Now, of course, if you've actually got the nitro generator, you could theoretically just link these all up with cables, but this is wireless, so it's just better. And yes, I know you can use Ender upgrades, but that's irrelevant. Just let me be cool with my modular routers. Oh, and in case I forgot to mention it, if you want to use the energy output module, you can also charge batteries. Yeah. It, it's that cool. You can just transfer the energy like that. It's so cool. It's so cool. Modular routers is so cool. Enough of the word dancing. Back to the guide. So now we've looked at all of the energy stuff and powering all the machines and everything. Let's have a look at the fluid side of things. So here we have a pretty simple situation. All we want to do is pull the water from this fluid tank into the modular router and then over to this fluid tank. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need two fluid modules. One of them is going to act as a puller and one of them is going to act as a sender. Now, when you go into it, you want the puller to go from the water source into the modular router and you want the other one to go from the router into the actual water source. Now, if we just stick these in like this, you're going to see nothing happens. And the reason that nothing is happening is because we have nothing in the buffer that can hold the liquid. Now, there's a few options that you have for this. You can just use a bucket. That will work perfectly fine. Alternatively, you can use another fluid tank. For the purposes of today, we're just going to use this fluid tank. And what you'll see is that that is starting to move that liquid over into here. 
and we'll start to see this slowly fill up with water. And that's basically how the fluid system works. Now, there are some things that you can customize with this. So firstly, you can set the parameter of how fast you want the fluid to transfer from one to another. So if I set this to 8,000, that should pull in eight buckets instead of the normal one. But in order to facilitate that, we're gonna need to use some of these fluid transfer upgrades, because what that's gonna do is allow fluid to travel faster between the two different different tanks that we've got. So if I stick a bunch in there, that's going to go super quickly and you'll see that is now going up at 8,000 per operation instead of the 1,000 it was before. It will always flow at whichever is lower out of the fluid transfer rate you set in your fluid module and the maximum fluid rate set by your upgrades. You need room in both of them in order to flow at maximum capacity. And the same with your items, you've got a blacklist and whitelist that you can use in order to move items around that you want to without just in the ones that you don't. Fluid mechanics have never been simpler. Honestly, this is actually quite cool when you use it with Create, because Create makes things very difficult for no reason at all. Now, the final category of modules are what I like to call the environmental ones, because they affect things actually in the environment around them. So, for example, we have Breaker and Placer modules. Can you guess what these do? Yeah, they place and they break blocks. Pretty straightforward. We also have a module called a vacuum module. And the reason we need to look at this now is because you can make a really cool setup using the placer, breaker, and vacuum modules. So here's a little bit of a test for you. If we want to break the diamond ore into diamonds and send them from there to here, how would we go about doing that? I'll give you a few seconds so that you can work that out and so that you can hit the subscribe button at the same time and then we will move on to the solution to this. That's right, it was a cheeky promo all along. So let's take this step by step. First thing we want to do is we want to pull the items from this chest and put them into the modular router and we need to make sure we set our whitelist to diamond or so we stick that in the first one next up we want to place the item in front of the modular router now i haven't shown you how this works so if you didn't get this far no problem at all but it works the same way as the others select the front make sure you set the whitelist to diamond or and then stick that in the modular router as well Next off, we want to be breaking it. So again, exactly the same, set that to the front, but this time we want to match this by the block and we need to put the diamond ore in there so it will only ever break diamond ore and make sure we set that to whitelist as well. We then want to use a vacuum module so that can go from the front as well and we're going to whitelist specifically diamonds on this one. So then this will pick those up. And then finally, we want to send the items to there, set the whitelist to diamonds and put that in the system. So that should pull the item, place it, break it, vacuum it and then send it. Let's give it a go. And there we go. We have a fully automatic diamond crushing machine. And the great thing is, if you make this breaker module with a enchanted fortune pickaxe, then that will also fortune it for you. Unfortunately, no way to actually get fortune four if you are playing vault hunters using this setup, but you can get fortune three. So for things like diamonds, that's pretty good. And then of course, you can kind of make it go a little bit crazy and get all of these to break super, super quick, and then it will vacuum them all up and then send them once it's done. It actually kind of sounds like a machine gun and it looks like an absolute travesty, but it's it's quite cool. You just need to make sure that you're not gonna despawn them if you're doing it this quickly. Like I said, faster is not always better. But as you can see, there you go. All of that's done. It's now vacuumed that up and sent them over here. These ones, for some reason, haven't been picked up, but that is fine. We can sort those ones manually. So there you go. A pretty cool demonstration of the placer and the breaker modules, as well as how the vacuum module works as well. All of these can be individually upgraded with range upgrades or area upgrades and things like that to make them even better. And I'm sure you guys can refine this design even more if you are actually doing it in your world. But for testing purposes, this will do for the time being. Now the void module is pretty straightforward. It will just make any item disappear that matches the whitelist. So if we were to put diamonds in here, you'll see that these are getting pulled in and they are just disappearing 
because that is just going to void everything for you. Void upgrades are insanely good for farm overflows because you can set it so that any item that doesn't match what you want to keep will immediately be voided and you won't cause server crashes every time you get a heart of diamond in your ice bonus farm, which totally never happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, if you want to go one up from the placer module, you have the extruder module. So the extruder module is really cool. What it does is basically does what the placer module does, except it will create a long line. So if we activate it now, you'll see that it will slowly create a long cobblestone line and then if we turn it off it will start to remove that line which doesn't seem super useful when it's going like this however if we simply add a few speed modules then all of a sudden it becomes very useful as a drawbridge and then you can just make people fall straight into the lava once you flick the switch on your modular router. This one's a little bit finickety to get to work, but once you've got it working, it is really cool and you can make some really cool stuff with it. I'd recommend just testing out what works for this one. The things you need to be aware of are the pickaxe level, the redstone signal, and you can always use a redstone augment if you want to change the behavior of the modular router. It's modular. After all, you can put modules together to make it work better for you. Now, the next one is the detector module. Now, this is really cool because what it will do is if it detects an item that matches the whitelist, it will produce a redstone signal. So in this case, we've got redstone lamp as the item that it is trying to detect. And you can set how strong you want the signal to be just in this interface here and which direction it comes from. But with the redstone lamp there, what it will do is if I put a redstone lamp here, you'll see that it generates a redstone signal. But if I put, let's say, some redstone dust in there, it won't generate a signal at all. This is very useful for an early warning system. Or if you're wanting to do a really cool keycard system, because what you can do is have keycards that only match the whitelist that's in there, match the NBT data or whichever data you want to use, and then have the redstone signal open the door. Pretty cool, right? Now, what the activator module does is basically acts the same way as a player. Now, you can set it to right click on an item, you can get it to right click entities or attack near by entities and this is all based on what's in the buffer so currently i have andesite alloy in the buffer and we have chromatic iron blocks here so if this works we should be able to make some andesite casing so all i'm going to do is make sure this is on right click from the front and put whitelist as andesite alloy so this should now right click whatever's in front with andesite alloy so we'll put the block there and there you go. It immediately creates an andesite casing. And then we could use breaker and sender modules and everything like that in order to be able to make these super, super quickly. But that is what that does for you. Now, there is one other module to be aware of, and that is the player module. Now, what this will allow you to do is transfer items between your inventory as a player and a modular router. This is completely disabled in Vault Hunters. It would be way too overpowered and yeah, just it's, we're not even gonna look into it because it's never gonna work. I would be very, very surprised if it did. However, if you are not playing Vault Hunters, that's essentially what it does, is it just interacts with yourself and the modular router. So you can go out farming, you can pick up a load of logs, for example, it'll pull them out of your inventory and into the modular router, and then you can send them to your storage. It's really cool. I honestly love playing around with it, but it is completely disabled. It just will not work here. So just be aware of that if you are playing Vault Hunters. Now, most of these augments and upgrades, I'm going to allow you to experiment with yourself, but there are a couple that I do want to go over. And those are the camouflage upgrade, the blast upgrade, and the security upgrade. So these are pretty cool. The blast upgrade simply makes it so that your modular routers are blast resistant. So if you're making a TNT Britannia farm, 
it's not going to blow up. You just stick this straight in here and it will just make it immune to explosion damage and also wither damage. So you can make an automatic wither farm using this as well, which makes it quite nice. There's also this security upgrade, which if I shift right click, you'll see it says owner hellfire mage. And then we can stick that in the modular router. And I would be the only person that could gain access to this modular router to change anything. Doesn't really work too well in a single player testing world, but on a server, it could be really good. And as far as I'm aware, it also works really well with chunk protection because then people can't come and destroy all your stuff and then finally my favorite upgrade the camouflage upgrade if i shift right click camouflage is deep slate bricks stick that in there it is now deep slate bricks still works exactly as normal but it is now deep slate bricks how many times can i say deep slate bricks lots apparently now the one thing that we haven't covered that i really want you to be aware of is the difference between an upgrade and an augment. The ones with the diagonal line are upgrades and they apply on the actual router themselves, whereas the square ones are augments and the augments basically work on the actual modules themselves. A great example of this would be a sender module that you're trying to send to a chest that is a little bit too far away. So this needs to be within 24 blocks and this definitely isn't. So if we put it here, it will say it is out of range. However, if we then go into here and put a load of range upgrades into the actual augmentation section, you'll see it now says that it's in range and we can just send them across there like that, no problem, going straight into that chest. That's really all there is to augments. There's not really that much to it. A very brief summary of what these do because this video is getting way too long already. So the fast pickup augment basically removes the delay before picking up an item, makes it really good for void upgrades. Now the filter round robin augment works in a little bit of a strange way. So if for example, we had the sender module here and we had different types of wool, what we could do is select them all like this. And what will happen is that when it goes to send them, it will send one white wool, then one orange, then one magenta, then one light blue, then one yellow wool, and just go like that and repeat over and over again. This is really good for one of the Batania flowers that requires you to have the rainbow colored wool in the correct order. But other than that, it's not really that useful. I mean, I guess you can make some mini games out of it, but beyond that, not great. The Mimic Augment basically is only used with the Extruder because what it allows you to do is copy light levels, redstone signals, that sort of stuff from the items that are being extruded. The Pickup Delay increases the delay. It's basically the opposite of the Fast Pickup between when you can pick up items that have been dropped. Great for use with the Flinger. The Pushing Augment just allows you to push items away using the Extruder, which can be quite useful for mob farms, things like that. Range Down and Rage Up, again, pretty self-explanatory explanatory we've already looked at those redstone augment just allows you to fine tune the redstone behavior the regulator augment allows you to just fine tune behavior for a bunch of different stuff stack upgrade we've already done and the xp vacuum augment just allows the vacuum module to pick up xp as well but that's basically it that's all you actually need to know to be able to do modular routers they are super strong they are very very nice to have and i will stand by this mod until the end of day now modular routers is a little bit different to my other guides because the best way to learn modular routers is just to go and do it yourself and experiment and get things wrong and learn how to do it. But I have covered all of the basics that you actually need to know in order to get you started up and running and hopefully build a few simple farms. Now, I don't normally do this, but if you did enjoy this video and you found it really useful, do consider joining our channel memberships. You'll be able to get behind the scenes looks of things, you'll get cool emojis and other stuff on the Discord. It'll be awesome and it really helps the channel out. Don't feel obligated, but if you want to, that would be awesome. That is where we're going to leave it for today though, everyone. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to give it a like. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks very much for watching. I've been Hellfire Mage and I will see you next time.